Hello friends, welcome back to the Tetra Adron Chemistry classes. Today I am going to discuss the interpretation of the 2D NMR spectrum. As you know, these 2D NMR spectrum can be of many kinds. So I will take uh, one by one. Uh, uh, I will discuss uh, all these 2D NMR spectrum one by one. But in today's class, I am going to discuss the cozy NMR spectrum that is correlation spectroscopy. But before going into the details of the correlation spectroscopy or the cozy spectrum, you should know why the 2D NMR spectrum are spectra are important and which uh, what kind of the important information we can uh, furnish from the 2D NMR spectrum. And uh, before going into the details of the 2D NMR spectrum, you should know the shortcomings or the drawbacks or the limitations of the 1D NMR spectrum. So uh, with the help of one or two examples, I'll try to uh, make you understand how uh, actually uh, uh, why this uh, uh, 2D spectrums are important for us. Okay, so for example, you are having this molecule. So this is the hypothetical molecule. I am not uh, sure that whether we can uh, we can make this uh, <coughs> structure or we can make this compound in the lab. I am not sure about that, but I am giving you the hypothetical structure like that. Okay, so this is this or what I can do, I can remove this double bond here, it is a cyclohexane ring, ok. So this is again say CH2 and CH3 here, similarly this molecule may have like CH2, CH3 here and another CH2, CH3 here, ok. So uh, in the proto, see if you want then you can add uh, one ethyl here also, right, CH2, CH3. So say you are having this kind of the molecule, so in the proton NMR spectrum you will get the signal corresponding to these three hydrogens of the methyl group and you will also get the signal of these two hydrogen of the methylene group. Likewise you may you will also have the signal related to this ethyl part as well as this ethyl part as well as this ethyl part. That means lots of CH2 and CH3 signals would be there in your proton NMR spectrum. But if someone asks you uh, say for example uh, roughly say for example this is the spectrum which you are getting blood like that okay say one is corresponding to CH2 right and other one is corresponding to CH3 like that okay? you can understand in that manner if someone asks you that uh, if this is the signal of the CH2 this is the signal of the CH3 and again say this is also for the CH2 this is also for the CH3 if someone asks you that which CH2 is connected to which CH3, right? Or like say you may have uh, this signal here CH2, but you will not have you will not have that information that this CH2 is connected to uh, this CH3 or say this another CH3. That means you cannot make the correlation between the two different kinds of the set two different kinds of the sets of the protons right because uh, see you will simply get the, the signal for this signal for this signal for this ch2 signal for this ch2 as well as you will get the signal for all these ch3 but if someone asks you that uh, which ch3 is connected to the which ch2 right then you will not be able to give this particular answer okay so in the 1d nmr spectroscopy it is not possible to correlate two different chemical shift right in proton nmr spectrum this is the one problem with the 1d nmr spectrum uh, spectrum okay and uh, second thing is that say for example this is uh, ch2 ch2 and you see this this is the kind of the hydrocarbon right this is the kind of the hydrocarbon and your all of the proton uh, would be somewhere around 1 to 3 ppm or 1 to 2 ppm you know the uh, chemical shift of your uh, methyl and the ethyl right your alkyl uh, hydrogens actually generally resonate uh, from 1 to or rather you can say uh, 1 to 2 ppm okay so when you have these large number of the signals in this particular uh, range of 1 and 2 ppm so there would be heavy overlapping in the spectrum and whenever uh, there is a heavy overlapping in the system 
the resolution of that spectrum would not be very very good and it is very it would be very difficult for you to actually identify the correct signal in that case so these are the two major problems with the 1d nmr spectrum first is the uh, we cannot make the uh, we cannot uh, correlate the two different chemical shift right in 1d nmr spectrum and second if your uh, uh, molecule is having that kind of the groups which uh, for which the chemical shift are concentrated in a very small range like 1 to 2 ppm as I have explained here. So there would be heavy overlapping. So you will not get a very uh, good result, uh, result spectrum and, that, uh, and then your interpretation would be very very difficult. Okay. So in order to avoid these problems like the resolution problem as well as especially, especially when you want to make the correlation between the uh, protons actually okay or between the carbon and the hydrogen all these things only then you will need the 2d nmr spectrum first of all you should know this particular thing now uh, before going into the details uh, one thing you must know guys uh, if you focus on the proton nmr spectrum say for example this is the spectrum okay and this is the nmr scale 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and it will extend up to 12 right so this is an MR spectrum and you know this is chemical shift this is chemical shift would be in the delta scale right there is no problem in that and in this particular axis you will have the integration so already this is the first dimension this is the second dimension so uh, the 1d NMR spectrum which you generally uh, see in the regular practice like proton NMR spectrum, like carbon NMR spectrum or any other NMR spectrum uh, for the nuclei which are NMR active, the spectrum is already a 2D NMR spectrum. So don't use your mathematics like 2D and 3D. In case of the 2D uh, spectrum, basically we have the two different chemical shift. It is not mathematically that you will have the two dimensional figure, then you will have the three dimensional figure. Even in the 4D NMR spectroscopy, you cannot have the four dimensions. Now, here in that case, the spectrum dimension means the different chemical shift. Okay, it is not like that mathematically you are doing something. I, I hope this much of information is quite sufficient to you. Now, I am uh, going to discuss uh, your very important uh, correlation technique, and that correlation technique is the COSI spectroscopy correlation spectroscopy i can write this correlation spectroscopy it's a 2d nmr spectroscopy right that means we have the two different uh, chemical shift in the two different uh, domains actually okay and uh, this cozy uh, spectroscopy or correlation spectrum is useful in order to correlate the different kinds of the hydrogen so correlation between the hydrogens correlation between the hydrogens okay correlation between the hydrogens that mean when you have the different kinds of the hydrogen which hydrogen is connected to which this information you will get from the cozy spectrum i hope this makes the sense so guys, this is, uh, this is the uh, schematic diagram of your COSI spectrum which I have taken uh, from NPTEL lectures okay, by uh, Professor Hanudatta Attatre. If you want to learn this 2D NMR spectroscopy in pretty much detail, so you can learn from uh, there also, right? Uh, you can uh, YouTube, in the YouTube itself you can uh, search the NMR spectroscopy by Hanudatta Attatre. Then you will uh, get the lots of information about this. So, so that particular slide I have taken from there. So what is the 2D NMR spectrum? So I am going to explain here. Say for example, uh, this is your one axis, right? First of all I am going for this one. This is your one axis which is the X axis, right? And here you see this is the chemical shift of a particular nuclei and this is again the chemical shift for the particular nuclei right and this is your second domain right second axis and here also uh, this is your first uh, chemical shift and this is the second chemical shift so this is say f1 axis actually this is f2 axis or you can say the domain also right so uh, this th these are the actually the chemical shift of the uh, hydrogens present in the particular kind of the molecule okay and for this, whenever you have this two-dimensional spectrum, uh, spectrum like that in the square shape, you will have a diagonal here. 
you will have this diagonal right and the peaks which are present on these diagonals they are known as the diagonal peaks and these diagonal peaks are nothing but they are the signal corresponding to the connect uh, to, uh, corresponding to the hydrogen which is present in the molecule so this actually this uh, this a actually right is the chemical shift of this one right so this is the chemical shift of this uh, which is on the uh, f2 axis or if you extend this here so this and these these two signals are same guys please remember this signal and this signal they are the same and they actually belong to this one in this domain and it belongs to this domain similarly this is second kind of the nuclear this is your second hydrogen and this is another diagonal peak and this diagonal peak is uh, is actually is the signal for this peak and if you extend this like that and so this and this so this and this they are the same and corresponding to these two peak this is the signal this and this they are the same corresponding to these this is the peak of course you will have the absolute value of the, uh, you will have the correct value of the uh, chemical shift here later we will see with the help of the example so this is the diagonal peak diagonal and in the diagonal you are having uh, the chemical shift of the hydrogens present in the molecule and then uh, this is the cross peak this is also the cross peak cross peaks are also known as the off diagonal peak and these peaks are very very important right and uh, this part is the, uh, this part is the upper trace of your uh, diagonal so i can write here upper trace i can write upper trace and this one is the lower trace of cozy spectrum but if you want to uh, if you want to interpret the 2d in a cozy spectrum so you need to actually uh, interpret only one part either you can interpret your upper part or you can interpret or you can interpret your lower part because uh, these two are actually uh, the reflections of each other so it is useless to actually interpret both the part the information which you will get from the upper trace the exact same information you will get from this lower trace also so it is up to you whether you want to uh, interpret this particular tra trace or this particular trace okay with with the help of the example we can see here how will uh, what how will actually interpret the uh, 2d rmr spectrum so whatever i have explained so far i have also summarized in this piece so what you can do you can take the snapshot of this one and uh, after taking the snapshot you can learn from here however i have already explained all these things okay now moving to the uh, actual spectrum where we can uh, see how we can interpret the things so this is uh, this is the real uh, 2d nmr uh, spectrum that is the cozy spectrum and here you can see what is written here uh, proton proton cozy spectrum and this uh, cozy spectrum which is here actually belongs to the uh, isoamyl alcohol molecule that is simply 3 methyl 1 butanol and this 3 methyl 1 butanol is like that you can see i can write here so this is my ch3 and this is ch this is ch2 and say this is ch2oh okay and one ch3 is here so this is the molecule actually and in this molecule you can see uh, uh, if you if you number this uh, compound then you can write uh, like that say this is carbon number 1 this is carbon number 2 this is carbon number 3 and this is carbon number 4 okay and uh, of course your methyl group is uh, already there so you can also write this as 4 why because these two are identical in that case so uh, what uh, see uh, when we actually use this uh, cozy spectrum so please remember in the cozy spectrum you will get the information about the neighboring proton which proton is correlating to which one that mean uh, you can see uh, this ch3 here this ch3 is directly j coupled with this one you can you can use the n plus rule n plus uh, one rule to actually explain the splitting pattern for this one so these hydrogens are coupling with this one so this uh, these two are directly j coupled so you will get the information in the spectrum itself that mean proton 3 is coupling with the proton 4 you will get the uh, cross peak corresponding to these two similarly uh, this 3 is actually uh, coupling with this ch uh, this ch uh, this ch is coupling with this ch that mean proton 3 is coupling with proton 4 
and proton 3 is also coupling with the proton 2 so direct j coupling is there so only those hydrogens which are present on the neighboring nuclei they will actually couple through the j coupling and only those coupling can be identified those cor these correlations can be identified in the uh, proton uh, in the cozy spectrum proton proton cozy spectrum and you know this ch3 cannot actually uh, couple with this ch2 right because they are very far away actually right so uh, generally one one to one coupling is allowed so this cs3 cannot couple to this one so you cannot uh, you you will never have the correlation of this uh, number four carbon with this number two similarly this four cannot correlate with this number one so you will not get the information about uh, you will not uh, get that this correlation of uh, fourth cs3 with the uh, one ch2 only uh, these two will couple so you will have the cross peak corresponding to this one these two will couple so you will have the cross peak corresponding to this one these two would couple so you will have the peak corresponding to this one right so uh, directly j coupled uh, the directly j coupled nuclei uh, which are there in the molecule uh, you will get the information about that okay so now uh, uh, you can correlate the things actually so here you can see guys uh, this is my uh, this is my f2 my this is my f2 domain so this is my h1 right this is h1 which is this one okay and this one is having the chemical shift of around 3.5 ppm which is which i am showing here okay this is my hydroxyl proton which is this one and the chemical shift of this hydroxyl proton is somewhere around uh, 3.2 okay and then you are having this h3 h3 means these three this ch actually so this ch uh, is having the chemical shift of 1.6 or 1.7 similarly you are having this 2h4 so these two h4 are having the chem uh, having the chemical shift of 1 so if you see the vice versa you can check here this fourth uh, this this one this ch3 and this this ch3 this is having the chemical shift of 1 and if you correlate this here h4 which is this one in this particular uh, domain also you will have the same chemical shift on this one similarly if this h1 is here this h1 is having 3.5 here also this you see h1 this is also having the 3.6 or 3.7 whatever it is having so h2 if you check with h2 this h2 is having the chemical shift of 1.5 here also this h2 is having the chemical shift of 1.5 this is how you can understand the things now you have now now see the, the important thing is that which uh, i have missed actually if you if you check the uh, if you check the splitting pattern right if you check the splitting pattern say for example i am checking the splitting pattern of uh, this uh, 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 carbon 3 which is having one hydrogen so three th these two are here these two are here okay and uh, two carbons are also uh, two hydrogens are also there so it would be a splitted p so uh, you see it's a multiplate because three plus three plus two that means eight eight hydrogens are there in the corresponding nuclei if you consider both of them the equivalent then again three two plus five are there and when these hydrogens coupled with these five uh, with these hydrogens it will give a multiplet so it is a kind of multiplet not very clear but it is a kind of multiplet here i can draw this multiplet like that okay so this multiplet is like that okay and if you focus on this ch2 right this C if you focus on this ch2 okay so this ch2 you can see here this is coupling with the ch here and ch2 here that means 2 plus 1 3 uh, that means it will have the quadrant for uh, for uh, carbon 2 which is having two hydrogen you will have the quadrant okay so here you see for h2 you are having the quadrant and if you clearly see then this quadrant would look like that according to the pascal's uh, triangle okay but you see uh, uh, i am uh, we are not looking for the splitting pattern in the 2d nmr spectrum so there is no use of uh, uh, there use there is no use of investigating the splitting pattern but if you want say for example uh, what i can do say if you if you want to uh, this is the uh, this is the diagonal peak right this is the diagonal diagonal peak corresponding to h2 right just like that okay so if you if you closely look this in the inset in the inside of this peak right so you will get the quadrate like that 
so inside this sphere or inside this uh, diagonal peak you will get this kind of the splitted pattern similarly if splitting is there you will find a clear splitting here for this also you will find a clear splitting there but we are not looking for the splitting so i am not going to explain that thing but you should know uh, this very important concept okay so i am removing this part from here because i need some space to explain the things more clearly to you okay now you can focus on the cross peak so these are the diagonal peaks okay corresponding to the different kinds of the hydrogen present in this is for h1 that mean with this one okay and this is my oh peak for this one and then i'm going h3 this is the peak for this one this is h2 peak for this one this is h4 the peak for this one okay so all these peaks are actually present in this so how many peaks you can expect one two three four here also one Two, three, four. Why I am not considering this OH because OH uh, is very rapidly uh, exchanging with the solvent, so we lost the uh, we lost the signal of this OH. I have already made a video where I explained uh, uh, the NMR spectrum of uh, ultra pure uh, ethanol and your uh, impure ethanol. There I have explained this uh, this exchange would occur very fast and NMR scale NMR instrument cannot actually the time scale for the NMR instrument is not that fast to actually detect this exchange so this peak is lost that's why I am not discussing this part actually right now I am going to make the correlation okay so uh, see I have already told you uh, this is the peak here cross peak this is also the cross peak but this is the reflection of this so it is up to you whether you interpret this one or this one both will make the same sense right similarly you can see this is the peak corresponding to this is the cross peak and opposite to that you see this is the cross peak and these two are also the same right and this is another cross peak this is also another cross peak so one two and three three cross peaks are in the upper trace one two and three the same identical three cross peaks are also there in the lower trace. Now I am going to discuss uh, the correlation. So how you see, here you can see your H1 is correlating to H2, right? Say this is carbon number 1 and the hydrogen connected to this is the H1. This is carbon number 2 and the hydrogen connected to this one is the H2 and they are directly J coupled, right? So as I already told you, we will always consider those nuclei which are directly J coupled, neighboring nuclei. So this one is, uh, this H1 is actually correlating to H2. That means you must have the cross peak which can correlate H1 and H2. Now focus here. This is the peak here which is corresponding to the H2. Right? H2 I have written here. And for this H2 I have the chemical shift of 1.6. Right? So what I can do, I can write chemical shift of 1.6 ppm for this one. Please remember, okay? So uh, where, right, this there, right? This is H1, right? So this is the P, H1 like that. And this H1 is correlating to H2. So where is the, you can, you can check the H2. This is your H2 also, right? So this H2 and this H1, they are directly connected here. They are directly connected. So this is the cross peak, which is linking this H2 nuclei with the H1. So if I use if I use this, okay. So let me change the color. So this correlation is there. This correlation is there. Similarly, you can see here this H2 is uh, cor uh, correlating to H1 also. See if one is uh, correlating to two, that, that that means one is coupling to two, then two will also coupling to two is uh, two will also couple to one. Similarly, this C2, this H2 is coupling with the H1 and H2 is also coupling with the H3. So, you must have the cross peak which correlates the H2 proton with the H3 proton. Let's check whether it is there or not. So, this is, you see, this is H3, which is this one, H3. And this H3 is coupling with the H2. That means this, this coupling is there. Now, I am going to discuss this H2 and H3. So this is H2 and H3. This is the cross peak. If you check, this cross peak is corresponding to the H2 here. And if you if you go in the top side, so you will get the signal of the H3. So here this H3 is coupling with the H2. So this correlation is also there. Now other what you can expect here, 
say this is your uh, C3, C3 is also coupling with the uh, C4, that means H3 is coupling with the H4, so you must have the cross peak corresponding to the H3, which correlates the H3 and H4, so where is that, this is the cross peak, right, and if you see here, this cross peak is correlating with this H3, and this H3 is correlating with the H4, so this is the correlation of H3 and H4, I can use this color, this is the correlation of H3 and H4. Okay. Similarly, you can I can change this color. And this is uh, where is the peak? Yeah, this is the peak, which is again you see the H3, and this H3 is also connected to the H2. Right. And the same information, if you want, then you can also interpret this part. It this part will also give you the same kind of the information. Now you can see, guys, it's very easy how to correlate the neighboring nuclei, neighboring hydrogen nuclei with the help of the cozy spectrum. But please remember, these cozy spectrum are useful only for the complex molecules. If you are new in the NMR spectroscopy and you are doing uh, your project from somewhere or you are learning your NMR spectroscopy in your PG program, then you must know uh, only for the sake of the practice you can run or you can interpret the 2D NMR spectrum of such simple molecules. However, this, these techniques are important uh, on, only for those molecules where lots of different groups are there and you have to uh, make uh, you have to make the correlation between them. In 2016, I have published a paper, New Xenthon from the Sorcia Core Data. Okay, in that paper, I have isolated a xenthon new molecule, and for that particular molecule, the reviewer actually asked the serious question kindly submit the cozy spectrum for this one correlation of the hydrogens present in the benzene ring. Because in that particular compound, we uh, I was having lots of hydrogens, and uh, I have to make the correlation between the hydrogen which hydrogen is connected to which one actually. So, for that, I have run that uh, cozy. I have also do the head core and other NMR spectroscopy technique. I hope this makes the sense and you uh, now you will able to understand how actually we uh, interpret the NMR spectrum. So this is uh, the explanation and now this is the spectrum uh, and this is spectrum you see you can uh, you can find uh, how actually this uh, cozy this is the practiced uh, thing actually right. So if you want to do the practice so what you can do you can straight forward make a diagonal here this is the diagonal. Okay, and this diagonal is having the peaks, right? This is the peak, this is also the peak, this one also the peak, and this one also the peak. Okay, this is how, and uh, this is the molecule, guys CH3, CH, C double bond O, CH2, CH3, uh, CH2, CH3, and this one, right? So you can see here these two methyls are the identical ones, so these two protons are same, and D and B, this C and D. So, uh, in that case, you can see here, uh, if you if you want, then you can see, uh, for this, you will get a triplet, like that. For A, you will get a triplet, and you can see this triplet here. And uh, this is CH2, for this, you will get a quadrate. So, this is the quadrate here, for C, and for C, you are getting this quadrate here, okay. And for this CH, actually 3 plus 3 is 6, then you will get a multiplet for this one, for D proton. So this is the multiplet which is very, uh, which is having very uh, weak intensity here, okay. And then you are having uh, these two CH3, this, these two CH3 must have a doublet here. For CH3 you will have a doublet, okay, that means kind, uh, B kind of the proton, so this doublet is there, okay. And corresponding to this one. Uh, you see here, this is the chemical shift of these two, B and A. This is B and this is A, okay? And uh, these are the chemical shift of C and D nuclei. And here also you can see the chemical shift of this, 1.0 for A and B. And here the chemical shift of C and D. Now, you have to look for the cross peak. So, where are the cross peaks? You see, this is the cross, these are the cross peaks too. These are the two cross peaks, I can write here. And these are the another two cross peaks. So it is up to you uh, which actually trace you want to interpret. Okay. So am I interpreting which is correlating to which one? Here you can see 
uh, C is connected to uh, A, so you must have the cross peak which connects the uh, pro pro proton C to proton A, right? So you can see here, uh, this is my peak, which is the peak for the C. So I can, what I can do? I can simply correlate to this one, okay, C. And, and if you extend this here, so it is like A is correlating with the C, this correlation is there. Similarly, B and D, this correlation you must make, this correlation. So this is your second peak, you see, and I am changing the color for this one, say this taking this one. So for this D, this is the cross peak and this D is correlated to B, right. So here you can see D is correlated to B. So this kind of correlation you can easily make. So this is the importance of the correlation spectroscopy. I hope you understood the lecture well and it is up to you how many number of the different problems you can practice right you can practice uh, see if you practice more then you will uh, learn more okay so uh, that's it for today so before signing out again i'm making the same request guys uh, uh, subscribe my channel if you're new here subscribe the tetra Hedron chemistry uh, classes channel and if you're a regular viewer kindly share my content to other students also so that the, they also get the benefit okay so that's it for today guys. Thank you. Thank you very much.